bug out, bug out location, bug out conveyance, and just bug out BS. Shoot, move, communicate, sustain. Without sustain, it's just LARPing. The problem in the prepper sphere with the prepper parrots is they have no experience. Um, have you ever planned or executed a non-combatant evacuation operation? Finding Neo? Anyways, bug out. <clears throat> well, you have to figure out where you're going. That's that's a good thing. Well, what's what about routes two through and off? How are you getting there? And see, the issue is that it's seasonal in a lot of parts of the country. The other issue is the options are different if you're in a place with high population density. There's more choke points. How are you getting across the river when the bridge is out? And so the conveyance is the piece, the BOC, the bug out conveyance. How are you getting from point A to point B? That's the question. Is it LPCs, leather personnel carriers? Your feet carry rucksacks, not feelings bags. Heard that once or twice here on this channel. Um, think about it in another fashion. The military, especially the, the 75th Ranger Regiment, the, the former Sergeant Major from it, um, they're focusing on certain things for our sh premier shock troops. One is marksmanship. That's the shooting part, right? The other one is movement, which is mobility training. Um, that's the move. That's the part people, especially the fat preppers, don't want to do, is move their body. <sighs> well, I'm serious, man. How are you getting from point A to point B? Because, you know, moving with a bunch of military age fit males is quite different than moving with grandma and a bunch of babies, especially in the winter time. And the book talks about pray that you're you're not fleeing during the winter, right? Um, why? Because the, that season is a tough season. It's hard. It's harsh. So actually doing a personal inventory on your bug out conveyance well, however you're able to do it it could be bicycle it could be paddleboard it could be a, a jeep me it could be a a, um, a, a go-kart a sled uh, a canoe there, there's plenty of ways that we get from point a to point b an airplane a gyrocopter whatever right um and that's based off your skill sets and your notes in special forces the teams are structured a lot about their ability to move. You have Merops teams, you have scuba teams, you have halo teams, you have, you know, ruck teams, you have mobility teams that focus on vehicles. Now, now what happened with the GWAT is a lot of people focused on vehicles because of that specific environment, which is different. The mountain's got its own ways. So how are you getting from point A to point B? Well, you need to know where you're going, but, but chances are that could change in an instant. Rock slide, road closure, checkpoints, wind shift with a fire, etc. How are you getting from point A to point B? And so the the bug out conveyance that has worked for us in peacetime and with having a fire threat is the bug out trailer. Now the bug out trailer is different than an RV. Could you use an RV for this? Yes. But there's an element that the bug out trailer has that the standard RV doesn't in my experience. We've had RVs before. I used to keep this all-American small canner in our small RV um, for different reasons. One is it, it reserves, you can cook faster with pressure cookers um, so you preserve fuel, which is a thing. So, so distance time speed math with fuel becomes a big thing. So the bug out trailer concept is using a cargo style trailer now to get from point A to point B. So you have a mobile shelter that is somewhat bear resistant and um, gives you options. So you want something 14 feet or less that could be towed without a big vehicle. Now, that being said, depending on your vehicle, um, that can change your distance that you can go. For example, a diesel, you know, some diesels get 20 miles a gallon and with a uh, extra fuel storage tank, they can give you a four to 800 mile range um, with fuel that's on board without stopping. Um, ask me how I know. Um, other ones uh, with gas rigs, 
some of the lighter vehicles, uh, some of your Toyotas, et cetera, uh, you're gonna go through eight, nine miles a gallon. So you're not gonna have the same range. So the bug out trailer concept is to give you some rodent proof and semi bear proof um, sleeping quarters. So when I first embraced the bug out trailer concept, we were doing a uh, diddy move from one part of the country to the other. And I used uh, that opportunity to buy a four by eight trailer that we pulled with a sedan. We were a young couple, didn't have a lot of money. And I built the sides up using marine grade plywood and did a top over it. And I hauled all my special valuables that I didn't want the movers to move, like guns and such. Um, and it weighed 1,680 pounds. And we pulled it from one part of the country to the other successfully with a couple kids in a sedan. Now, we didn't go over high mountain passes, so our route planning was different but we kept our tents and all our valuables in it when we'd stay at a motel, we'd have it locked up, et cetera. Um, the other thing is we had a, a dog with us. And so the dog would alert if someone would get close to the trailer, et cetera, which is part of the security system. Later on, I morphed that setup uh, to have something where you could sleep because sleep deprivation sucks. And when you're in a stressful situation, such as an evacuation or, should hit the fan or whatever scenario you have for your, your um, intelligence preparation of the battle space. It's like, well, if you have to leave your comfort zone, your place, and you have to go to wherever, um, someone else's house, can you not be the rude health guest? What I mean by that is, you know, uh, inside someone's house is different than having your own structure outside because space is a thing and people like their space for all kinds of things. What I have found is the bug out trailer using a cargo style trailer that you see a lot of a construction style trades embrace as a tool trailer is an excellent way to navigate in cities that have half a million to out here where we live. Um, why? Well, one is that slick sides um, are very hard and difficult for a bear to break into as well as, in my experience, RVs with their hookups and et cetera are, are just as prone to infiltration by rodents of the houses, if not more. And so the cargo trailer can remain packed in quite a state of readiness and security. So what we did with ours, and I've had several videos on this, is we have the same king size bed mattress that we sleep on every night um, in our bug out trailer. And so the difference is we have to climb up to get into it. But other than that, it's very, very familiar. And so the part of sustain is sleep, right? Because quite frankly, Mrs. Saw and I were not, you know, young um, military age men uh, or young rangers anymore, right? I'm not a young ranger anymore. So so being able to sleep comfortably is is critical. We also have the capability and capacity to bring our most valuable enablers in the animal kingdom, i.e. our protection dogs, with us. So their kennels are underneath us, which creates its own form of heat in the wintertime. We have used that in the driveway of relatives that live in cities with half a million people. We've used it up here in the north. Um, we have it packed, it stays packed, and we get to sustain its use by celebrating the biblical feast, as well as using it as a mobile hunting cabin, if you will, up here to stage out of for um, hunting. And so it gets a lot of use and stuff stays in it. So one of the things with survival kits and everything else, whether it be a bug out bag, like this bag from Sojourn Gear, you can limit the amount of stuff you take by the size of the container. And so with the bug out trailer concept, you don't want it to go over the maximum tow capacity of your vehicles. And so that changes things on how you do stuff. Now you could, let's see if I can grab this, go with canned food, like this elk from last year, but it's heavy, right? It's heavy. Another way to go, is just dehydrated food, like this vegetable flakes. 
uh, uh, yet another way, if you have access to it, is a freeze dryer. So this, this is about the same, but it's ounces and less prone to breakage. So these type of things, the freeze dried stuff is excellent to put in your, because this is just taco meat, um, into your um, buckets or Contico boxes. I'm a big fan of the Contico box method. I use the roll away ones, like the tool chest ones. Um, because I've lived out of them most of my life <laughs> when they first got introduced. So you have that, you have your duffel bag, and then you have your rucksack. And so we pack our trailer just like you do line gear from your body out, right? It's the same concept. So our bug out bags, if you want to call them that, um, are inside that trailer, as well as our other means of conveyance, such as bicycles, sometimes a canoe, um, uh, sleds are always in there because our puppies can help move the material with us and we can slide or float the, those, that equipment across something. Um, we also have a bear fence in there. We have a hot tent in there. So we can go from, oh, we can't pull the trailer because the ground is bad, etc. And we have to transition the, the good stuff from the bug out trailer to our bug out vehicle, which is because of maintenance, our everyday use, everyday carry daily driver a four-wheel drive pickup truck, we can open the back and rapidly throw our other shelter system into the truck. Um, if we had time on evacuation, we, we load that way. If not, and depending on the truck we use, because we have more than one, or if we can have two trucks and two trailers, which is an option that we have developed, is that I can put our a water container that we use for firefighting, which uh, holds 325 gallons, I can put it in the pump in the back of a pickup truck and tow an equipment trailer or the bug out trailer at the same time. And so then it allows us to have a massive amount of water uh, if we find a water source, uh, which is a different way of looking at things because of, see, fire danger, fire um, is a thing in the north, fire right? And I'm the fire extinguisher. And the fire drill is a good basic way of, of developing an effective system. Now, all things devolve down to your leather personnel carriers. Well, what if you're in a wheelchair, right? What if you just can't move that fast? And so your zero to 300 meter distance time speed math is really important. Another way of looking at it is, well, what if you heat both wood statistically, a house fire is, is a big thing. And so you need at least 100 feet away from that structure for any other type of fuel or trees and other structures that you pack accordingly so you don't put all your eggs in one basket. And, and that's the principle of the bug out trailer. Uh, things that will help you is bullion. Oh, I can't prep. Oh, well, that's not that much. Is that $1.99? The other thing that all, well, not all, but many soldiers know across the globe is ramen. Um, I don't know how many stories I have of, of being around troops that from, you know, Europeans to Central South Americans to Asians, and we go for our lunch break during an exercise, and we all pull different types of ramen out of our ruck. Um, look, 370 calories. You have salt and fat, which is really hard to find. I've ate ramen that is way past its expiration date. You do you. Um, it is the quintessential soldier food uh, with partisan uh, rations. I use dehydrated food a lot, rehydrate it in my Nalgene bottles on the move, so I use less fuel. So that's another way of stealth, not having a fire um, with dehydrated food or freeze-dried food, you can rehydrate it. And uh, that's another system from leather personnel carriers. Uh, it's the poor man's mountain house, let's just put it that way. How are you getting from point A to point B is going to dictate where point B even is, right? So you may have to have different points between there for resupply. Now, I'm not an advocate of trespassing, especially in the great state of Montana. It is illegal and will get you in trouble. However, there is millions of acres of national forest and millions of acres of state land, unlike other parts of the country. And so strategic relocation quickly will change the threat. A lot of people say, well, the fire danger is so bad up there. It's bad where you are. In any type of civil unrest, think of the Chicago fires. 
Fires spread through cities really fast without infrastructure pr present. And so if you have warning, what's the, what's the drill? The fire drill is hook up the trailer and go. If the container, in this case our bug out trailer, if the container size and weight is matches the distance times speed math, which is distance time speed math, how long and how much fuel does it take to get to your bug out location? Well, I would start zero to 300 meters from wherever you are, your work to 300 meters, your house to 300 meters, and start these 300 meter circles in your daily life, your pattern of life, where you go. Um, because, and then look at the choke points because the choke points might be trying to cross the, the river when, you know, whatever, um, group of people have decided to block the bridge out. That's a choke point, right? It's also a place where people put checkpoints. The roundabouts that you see popping up all over the United States, those are population control measures. Ask me how I know. That's what they are. And so those things now become places to avoid, well, can you avoid it pulling a trailer? Eh, probably not, but what's most likely? You know, something, natural disaster, tornado, fire, earthquake, um, volcano, et cetera, happens in your location. It's so much more convenient, and you bring so much more capability and capacity with you with the bug out trailer system. Because we have a place and space for our dogs, we have food storage, we have the ability to, um, feed ourselves water, et cetera, gather water, boil water, filter water. Uh, these basic human needs we've already pre-poed and pre-packed into it, including multiple spare tires, um, saws that run off of the right thing, manpower, all the way down to manpower, right? Why? To remove obstructions, cables to move stuff out of the way. Um, also, think about the aerial threat. If you are vagabonding or dwelling portably, two awesome books, um, think about your signature. Hobos get it, right? Well, because they employ this thing called stealth. And so the bug out trailer, in my experience, is the biggest form of conveyance that most people can have access to. And it could be something as small as a very ultra lightweight trailer that you pull with a sedan. Now, if you have a CDL and you can drive a big rig, well, there you go. But big rigs can't fit into the places and spaces um, up in the mountains. We have taken our bug out trailer uh, high up into the mountains in places where it's not seen uh, as a base camp for hunting. And so the bug out trailer is part of the, the conveyance is down the truck. And so maintenance schedules on the truck are really important. And the ability for everyone uh, in your triangle to be able to hook up and drive um, that that vehicle uh, as well as the trailer or the conveyance. For example, do you have a way to get off the X via water? That was used all over the United States with Westward Expansion. Those were the highways of old. And so you may have a very easy conveyance just outside your door that you can just plop your you know, canoe in and float downstream to get off the X. Um, have you really looked at mobility training? It's shoot, move, communicate, sustain. Well, if you cannot communicate, which is the four pillars of communication are extremely impor important, you cannot sustain the relationships. The relationships with the equipment, the relationships with each other, uh, the, the pre-coordination that you haven't burned rapport, so now you actually have a place to stay. Many people, they talk about this stuff, the prepper parrots, but they burn rapport everywhere they go because they don't sustain the relationships. That's a problem because of ego. Because the enemy to bugging out successfully is propaganda, inactivity, pride, and ego. And that's, that's the enemy of the relationships. You may not have a place to stay because you're assuming, because you refuse to follow the four pillars of communication, which closes the communication loop. You may have burned that relationship only to show up in a destitute situation um, without a place to stay. And so 
one of the ways to give yourself a place to stay because the doors may be closed that that location may be occupied by a bigger force is the bug out trailer um, so think of your conveyances if you want to know more we go through a lot of stuff with survival preparation because we have read this book uh, and if it doesn't happen in my lifetime great um, how what's the end of it you flee into the mountains something to think about there's a lot of instruction that happens in the mountains um, and it's not about gathering kit. Uh, everyday use, everyday carry trumps a good idea ferry. It's about consistency, consistency in maintaining and sustaining relationships. If you're consistently burning relationships everywhere you go, you're not gonna last long. If you, you burn yourself out and you don't look at your health span, you may not be able to walk from point A to point B, so you better really look closely at your conveyance. What has worked in the past? Horses, llamas, goats sled dogs there's all kinds of ways to get from point a to point b but you have to really look at your place you do an area assessment off of your real 90 percent because your context is different than mine if you live in hawaii it's different than it is in montana if you live down south in the ozarks there's a lot more people per square mile there's a lot less choices other than trespassing for some people which i do not recommend why well that's somebody else's place um do we all have a right to be a national forest? Well, we're C. Um, they're, they're closing off access for a reason. I can tell you there's great swaths of land that, that people have been closing off um, either by buying it or by legislation to keep people out of it um, because the, the elite people understand distance time speed math. If you own six sections, people just aren't gonna be able to walk to your place. If you're several hundred miles away from any population centers, where's the zombie horde coming from? And so then it becomes location, location, location. And you can use your skills and a consistency of everyday use, everyday carry in developing systems that are layered defenses um, to keep you and yours safe. Um, we do it all the time up here because of fire danger. Our, our bug out trailer is packed and stays packed throughout the year. Why? So we can just hook up and go if we have any early warning. If not, then it's just the vehicle, right? And the, the stuff that we would take is already to throw into the vehicle from the trailer. Um, and so a layered system that way, having your loadouts on what goes where um, is a game changer. Um, think about how you're transporting your, your number one security element that's a force multiplier, your canines, well-trained ones. If they're not well-trained, don't even worry about it. Um, you have to look at what will, what will keep you safe with your security, with the preservation of life. That's people of like-minded moral compass. Yeah. So when you're developing the actual location, make sure it's people with like-minded moral compass. They may not have the same moral compass because they're not about sustaining relationships. Uh, we call that a clue in the intel world. I hope this finds you well. If you want to more, check out the links, go to my page on Patreon or uh, Brother Rex's page or find me out there a bunch. Um, please read the channel description before you start typing, right? Um, I'm not for everyone. Um, I'm an instructor by profession and trade and have been for most of my life. This is not a theory. These are things we employ all the time. Um, and have employed in some cases for multiple decades because I know what it's like to move from one side of the country to the other with babies and infants. It's a different math problem. It's not like a bunch of you know, guys LARPing, marching down a road. We call that an easy opportunity for resupply, <laughs> right? <laughs> or a threat that needs to be dealt with, right? So, so remember you know, the image that you're projecting when you're developing your bug out conveyance, if it looks like you're going to camp, I mean, when BLM shut stuff down uh, during COVID, um, the whole vagabonding style lifestyle got squashed real quick uh, and they looked down upon it. So you have to look at the size of the container, the size of your ability to move off road is way better with certain vehicles than others. Giant RVs are not easy to turn on mountain roads. Um, with something that's in the 14 foot range, you, you can turn it around and uh, move it 
uh, way easier than you can something that's big like a, a big RV. And so look at your conveyance. Um, there's several ways to do it. But your bug out conveyance, your BOC, how are you getting from point A to point B? That will help you develop the, the task list of what you need to develop in order to sustain the relationships with your environment and are able to sustain yourselves and the people you care about. It has little to do with shooting. Mobility training, it's a focus. Very few preppers even look at it. I hope this finds you well. This has been a free lesson from Survival Applications Weapon Systems. Check out the links to follow if you want to learn more. Hopefully, we'll see you soon. Shalom.